The Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics is, is the default interpretation of quantum mechanics. This is an interpretation of quantum mechanics that sits closest to the math, and you should check out my previous video uh, for a very detailed description of the Copenhagen interpretation. And today, I wanna to talk about the weaknesses of this interpretation. One of the biggest uh, weaknesses of the interpretation is one of the uh, supposed strengths of the Copenhagen interpretation. <laughs> the, uh, from the outset, the Copenhagen interpretation says, look, we don't fully understand what's happening in subatomic physics. We can't build a mental model because our brains are so tuned to classical macroscopic thinking. We can't actually describe what's actually going on. So let's just use the math to guide our results. If that feels a little uncomfortable, you're not alone. This is one of the biggest criticisms of the Copenhagen interpretation, which is really? Really? You don't know what's going on? Like, like take for example the phenomenon of a quantum jump. Uh, we've, we use this term all the time, we use this phrase all the time where, as say an electron inside of an atom can jump from one energy level to another. And when it does, it can either absorb or emit uh, radiation of a very specific frequency. We're so used to this concept of the quantum jump. It's like, okay, quantum jumps happen, what's the big deal? But Ask yourself, what's actually happening when an electron jumps energy levels? What is the physical process? Is it slowly moving from one energy level to another? Well, if it is, that should appear in the radiation signature that we see, and we don't. We see a very sharp line in the radiation. It, it, it goes from one to another. So does the electron like magically disappear from one energy level and then magically reappear at another? That seems weird. Weird too. How do how does an electron magically jump from one place to another? The Copenhagen interpretation says, shut up and calculate. It says, don't bother, don't try to picture it, uh, just do the math to get predictions. But without that picture, without that visual, how do we know we're right? How do we know we're not missing something deeper in the actual evolution of subatomic physics? You say it's impossible for us to describe what's happening in, in the subatomic world, but maybe you're just not being creative or imaginative enough. Maybe we're not smart enough. Maybe we had some big brain time. We would actually be able to describe the process of a quantum jump, and the Copenhagen interpretation is silent on that issue, so it's, it's unsatisfying. Another big issue with the Copenhagen interpretation is this idea of measurement. And the problem with measurement and the problem with this concept of the collapse of the wave function is that it appears that subatomic physics operates under two separate rules. When we're not looking, when we're not making a measurement, when we're not doing anything special, we have the wave function associated with every particle, which describes in the Copenhagen interpretation the probabilities of where we might find the particle the next time we look. And it evolves in time. And it evolves uh, totally deterministically according to the Schrodinger equation. It's just moving along, moving along, moving along. And then we take a measurement and then that wave function goes away. There's a collapse of that. Then we get a non-deterministic result. We get an electron appearing at some random place on the screen. How can the electron behave under two separate sets of physical laws? When we're not looking, it's following the Schrodinger equation. And then when we are looking, it's collapsing and appearing on the screen. Name one other physical system throughout the universe that operates under two separate physical laws depending on whether we're looking at it or not. Go ahead. I'm waiting. You can't. You can't. So like, if the Copenhagen interpretation is correct, we have all these physical laws that guide us and make predictions, and we live in a deterministic universe, and it even apply to subatomic particles, because as the subatomic particles are moving and evolving on their own, they're following the Schrodinger equation, but then all of a sudden we, we open the box, we peek inside, and then all the physical laws get tossed out the window, and we replace it with this measurement rule. 
That seems so lame and so weird and so counterintuitive, and it just seems wrong. This is the measurement problem found in quantum mechanics, in particular the Copenhagen interpretation, and it exposes some flaws in the shut up and calculate way of thinking because it's not providing a picture of what's happening in the subatomic world and it's giving like inconsistent results for the evolution of our of physics of the universe depending on whether we're looking or not and that just seems weird so if you're not completely satisfied with the copenhagen interpretation you are not alone and there are some alternatives available but i gotta tell you the alternatives aren't that great either. But that is the subject for another video. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to go to patreon.com slash pmsutter to keep this show going. I really do appreciate it.